Tokyo is a city that accommodates any travelers with different interests and ages, but it's also a vast city that you can easily get lost or don't know what to do next or tomorrow. So in this video, I'd like to introduce you to 100 ideas of things to do in Tokyo. Let's dive into the one of a hundred, and something you cannot miss is Sensoji Temple. In the modern city of Tokyo that things are renewed and reconstructed in fast speed, still keeping traditional feeling of old Tokyo is Asakusa. The Sensoji Temple and its gate called Kaminarimo, which means the Thunder Gate, are the must-see scenes in Tokyo. Asakusa is a field with tourists all around the year so you can enjoy the festive and energetic atmosphere. Something you notice when you enter the temple is the sound of a shaking metal box. It's to get the fortune-telling paper omikuji. Maybe you can try and see how your Tokyo travel will go. If you have time, I recommend you to go both in daytime and late night time. In the late evening time, after all the visitors are gone, you can stroll the temple and town little nap in the quiet environment. Sometimes, times like that can be the most memorable time of their travel. Once you come to Asakusa, how about finding all-time favorite souvenirs from Tokyo? From Kaminarimon Gate to the temple, there is a Nakamise Street. This is the best spot to purchase typical souvenirs for yourself from Tokyo. Asakusa has lots of other streets full of souvenir shops and places to eat, so you can enjoy some shopping and eating snacks. When it comes to the shopping in Asakusa area, something common to purchase is a Japanese kitchen tool like knives. If you are interested in looking around, something you cannot skip is the Kappabashi Street in the west of Asakusa. Kappabashi Street was originally a town of wholesale stores of kitchen tools for restaurants and manufacturers gathered, but now many stores are open for visitors and becoming a popular spot to visit to get something not typical souvenirs. You can get state-of-the-art knives to the cute bowl of Hoya kitchen or some hood-shaped figures for your interiors. To dive into the culture of Japan, how about trying wearing Japanese traditional cloth, kimono? In Tokyo, Asakusa is the perfect area for that. There are many shops that you can try and rent kimono. Of course, you can purchase too. In the summertime, you can wear yukata, which is a lighter version of kimono. It's not easy to walk around long distance with this, so it can be one of the challenges you can try in Tokyo. And Asakusa is a perfect spot to walk around with kimono. When you stroll around Asakusa, what you see between buildings is Tokyo Sky Tree. Now let's see Tokyo from the sky. Tokyo Sky Tree is a 634 meters high, which can be read Musashi in Japanese which is the old country name of Tokyo. There is an observatory at 350 meters and 450 meters above ground, and since Sky Tree is located at the northeast edge of Tokyo city center, you can see the whole Tokyo in one glance. When they get busy, they stop selling tickets at the counter, so I recommend you to make reservation in advance, especially if you like to go up on the specific time, like twilight time. Under the sky tree is a sky tree town. You can enjoy shopping and dinner at the food court, and it also has Sumida Aquarium. There are travel costs can add up, so if you are looking for something more easygoing, the best spot to visit is Asakusa Tourist Center. On the higher floor, there is an observation deck that you can see Asakusa. It's not as high as Tokyo Sky Tree, but you can enjoy the illumination of Tokyo Sky Tree from the other side of the Sumida River and also see Sensoji Temple from above. It's one of my favorite spots in Tokyo. Between Asakusa and Skytree, there's a pedestrian bridge and a little path along the toll line and the canal. It's not widely known yet, so it's a perfect spot to stay away from the crowd and enjoy walking. Along the route, 
There is a Sumida Park that is famous for cherry blossoms. You can also find similar coffee shops and benches that you can have a seat and take a rest. From the bridge along the Tobu Line, you can see the view of Tokyo's east side along the Sumida River. If you like to enjoy the view of Tokyo waterfront more, something you can ride is the Tokyo Sightseeing Ferry. It takes you all the way to Tokyo Bay's Odaiba. It gives you a diversified view of Tokyo that you cannot see from trains or walking. In about one hour, you go under the symbol of Tokyo Bay, Rainbow Bridge, and arrive at Odaiba. If you prepare a shorter ride on the boat, there's also the route just going around near Asakusa and connecting the Odaiba and the pier near Tokyo City Center. Visit Daiba. Odaiba is an area of the Tokyo Bay that are connected by Rainbow Bridge from Tokyo City Center. This man-made area has office and some condos too, but it's more known as an entertainment district. The Daiba used to be a small island with ballet that used to protect Tokyo. Now it's connected to the land and you can enjoy the view of Tokyo Bay. In summer, you can see people enjoying the beach ballet and just getting some bathing on the beach. Odaiba has similar hotels and shopping centers such as Dex Tokyo Beach and Aqua City Odaiba, so it's a place you can enjoy all day. See the big Gundam statue. One of the popular shopping malls in Odaiba is Daiba City. What makes this mall famous is the big statue of Gundam. After you filmed enough of Gundam, you can enter the building and enjoy food court. On the top floor, there is a Gundam base that you can purchase for models. On the weekend or busy day, you might not be able to enter, so I recommend to go early. Riding Yurikamome Yurikamome is an automated transportation system without a driver, and you can travel from Shinbashi in Tokyo city center to Odaiba across the Rainbow Bridge. It's a line used by commuters too, but because of the amazing view of the Tokyo city skyline, it's one of the attractions for visitors to Tokyo. This can be the top attraction for tourists who likes to be on the ride and also for children. The other end of this Yurikamome is Toyosu, known for the fish market. Before you get into it, another place to stop is Toyosu Gururi Park. It's a park overlooking Tokyo city center from the other side of the bay. It has a wide open view of Tokyo skyline and rainbow bridge. It's a perfect place to take a rest, looking at the Tokyo, feeling that you're in Tokyo. But what makes Toyos famous is the world's biggest fish market. Even though the most of the facilities are for fall sellers and professionals, so you cannot go in, but there are routes that you can see the market auction in the morning. You can enter even the afternoon on the day the markets are open, but it might not be worth walking all the way after the auction has finished. If you are not really a morning person, even when the auction is not going on, there are places for you to eat in the market. And where there are more choices of eating is a little area called Senkyaku Banlai. It's like a food entertainment park that many seafood restaurants gathered. Many of them offer seafood directly from the fish market, and you can enjoy the fresh seafood like tuna. Right next to it, there is a hot spring called Manyo no Yu. It's a hot spring facility that they bring natural hot spring water from a hot spring called Yugawara near Hakone, and you can enjoy the natural hot spring water overlooking Tokyo Bay. If you are not comfortable to take a bath, there is a foot bath on the rooftop that you can enjoy for free, and you can soak your foot on the hot spring water and see the view of Tokyo Bay. But if you prefer something more authentic experience of public bathhouse culture of Tokyo, there are lots of public bus houses in the town. Let's go back to downtown Tokyo. Kotobukiu near Ueno Station is an old-fashioned bathhouse. The price for the small public bus house is set by Tokyo government, and usually it's common to 520 yen as of today. You can enter the bath for 520 yen, and usually there is additional cost for using sauna. It doesn't come with towels, but you can purchase or rent towels, depends on the bathhouse. Even though in the most of the hospital facility in Japan doesn't allow tattoos, 
Some of the public bus houses in Tokyo allow tattoo, including this Kotobuki. You can experience the old style bus house culture in Tokyo. Let's see if you get into it or never again. Epic coffee shop experience. If taking bath with everyone is too intimidating for you, you can still see the bus house. Near Iria Station of Hibiya Line, there is a coffee shop called Lepon Kaisayu that old bath house was renovated. The coffee shop is in the room where it used to be changing rooms, and the bath area is an office space for the architectural design office. You can also enter there and look around the old bath house that remains almost as it was. But something amazing they offer is a coffee and ice cream. The ice cream is a homemade with fresh root from the farm in Odawara, and you can enjoy the single origin coffee that they match with the ice cream. And both ice cream and coffee were, wow, very good. It was a very cozy environment with a nice people. Another bus that is tattoo friendly is Bunka Yokusen near Shibuya. After the bus, let's feel the air of the city. In Tokyo, best spots are the rooftop garden. Behind the Bunka Yokusen, there is a big concrete structure. This is the Ohashi Junction, which is the intersection of two capital freeways, Route 3 on elevated road and Route C2 in the deep underground. For the environment, they completely cover the junction and made it to the base of the highway patrol and a rooftop garden that everyone can enter and walk around. Another rooftop garden I recommend is Ginza 6, a shopping center in Ginza. You can enjoy the 360 degree view from the rooftop. It's a great escape from the crowd of the street. Most of the department store have rooftop garden that everyone can go up and usually it doesn't have many people, so it might be interesting to find your favorite small gardens in Tokyo. Once you take a rest, it's time to enjoy Japanese department store. Tokyo has several major department stores, but something worth visiting just for architecture is Mitsukoshi and Takashimaya in Nihonbashi area, which are one of the first department stores in Tokyo and also Isetan department store in Shinjuku, which has a record of the most selling department stores in Japan for years. When it comes to the department store, something you must take a look is the basement, which is called Depachika. Most of the department stores have a basement floor section that you can find tons of sweets and delis. You can also purchase bento box or sushi box and bring back to your hotel or eat in the park. When it comes to the bento box, something popular to tourists are ekiben that you can bring to the Shinkansen and eat, but you can also get the basic reasonable bento on the streets too. A bento box from casual shops like Origin and Hotomoto carries noriben, which is under 400 yen and it comes with rice, nori seaweed, and some fries. It's quite reasonable and simple, but it tastes really good when you're hungry and haven't eaten it for a long time. When you need light meal or doesn't feel like eating in the restaurants, no worry, you don't have to make every meal a special experience or a special Japanese experience. You can also try to get your breakfast or lunch or dinner at convenience stores in Japan. There are three major convenience stores chains in Japan, Lawson, Family Mart, and 7-Eleven. Just for these chains, there are about 5,000 stores just in central Tokyo's 23 cities. Each of them carries similar products, but slightly different. If you've been to Japan or after your visit to Japan, please share which becomes your favorite convenience store chain and if there are any foods you liked. Besides the lots of convenience stores, what you might notice in Tokyo streets are the vending machines. There are a variety of drinks you can choose from, and some of them are seasonal that I've never seen before. Some drinks are like, I doubt if they tasted before they said it, but it's part of Tokyo's experience to make a small, funny mistakes. In summer, the cold drinks on the street is a lifesaver, 
And in winter, a warm drink warms you up. And at night, the machines light up the streets for you. Once you come to Tokyo, dining is also an important experience. And a must thing to do in Tokyo is eating sushi. There are a variety of sushi restaurants, from reasonable family chain to luxury counter bar style. The sushi restaurant, you can eat certain quality but still easy to go in and not too much worry about what it is. Sushi chains from Hokkaido. It's not a fixed price, but you can eat a good quality sushi in an easy going environment. Another thing to try is tempura and soba. These are typical Japanese food and the food you can experience at once is tempura soba. Soba is a buckwheat noodle, so make sure to avoid it if you have allergy. The simple soba and freshly fried tempura somehow goes very well and it's common to eat as a set. Kompachi is a popular restaurant that became a model for the Hollywood movie Kill Bill. They make soba right there. Lunch is very reasonable price for the quality. Tonkatsu is a deep fried pork cutlet that you often enjoy with the thin sliced cabbage. If you cannot eat that many pork, you can also order other foods such as fried shrimp. Many chains of a really feel of the cabbage and rice soup, so it's a great place when you like to eat the big portions. Find your favorite ramen. Another popular food in Japan is ramen. But probably the most popular ramen among visitors to Japan is tonkotsu ramen, which is a pork broth started in Kyushu. Kyushu Jangra Ramen is a popular tonkotsu ramen restaurant, and if you like vegan choice, there's a vegan jangara on the second floor of the Harajuku shop. There's a more casual ramen shop like Hakata Tenjin that you can get a real feel of the noodle called Kaedama. Tonkotsu ramen is a pork broth creamy soup, but ramen is not just tonkotsu ramen. Ramen is a noodle bowl originally came from China and developed in many different styles in Japan. The taste and the style varies depends on the region in Japan. You can try all the different ramen just being in Tokyo. After you eat ramen or sushi, something you might want to have is a good cup of coffee. Tokyo has top coffee shops that you can enjoy the great quality cups. And something really trending now is the aesthetic coffee places with high quality selected coffee. The popular store is Glitch that has several shops in Tokyo. The people are very friendly there and ask you what you like and you can ask anything about coffee. There are tons of coffee shops in Tokyo, so it will be one of the fun to find your favorite coffee shops in Tokyo. Something you need with coffee is smartphones good too, but how about a book? The area where Glitch Coffee is near Jinbocho that has lots of coffee shops and used bookshops. Most of the bookshops are in Japanese, but some bookstores carry English books. So how about you pick one book and travel together? After the lunch, something you want to try is the sweets. Even though Japanese foods are popular, it seems not everyone, especially visitors from Western countries, are not a big fan of the Japanese sweets. Mostly because you are not used to soybean being so sweet. But once you get used to it, you might get too into it. Why don't you start your first spoon in your next trip to Tokyo? If you are not that into sweets, how about enjoying bitter matcha instead of sweets? There are similar gardens in Tokyo that has a tea house, but somewhere you can relax more in Japanese style house is Kosowa in Jiugaoka. It's a tea house renovated an old wooden house built in 1950s, and the only thing is you need to sit on the floor on Japanese style room. But it's a really nice experience that is a bit different from the city center experience. If you want to take Japanese food home, antenna shop is convenient. Many regional garments across Japan have shops in Tokyo and you can get a glimpse of the rich food culture of each region of Japan. Many of them are gathering near Ginza area. The Kotsu Kaikan in front of Yurakucho Station is a home to shops from Hokkaido and Okinawa, which are especially popular among Japanese regions. There are shops on the first floors and basement. There are also restaurants and balcony on the second floor is my favorite spot to watch the Shinkansen. 
If you like to explore the isle with more regular Japanese foods that we eat daily basis, a good idea is to go to regular supermarkets. Tokyo is not the best place to look for a big supermarket as the space is limited, but recently in Ginza, a large discount supermarket called OK Stores opened. You can buy everyday ingredients and sweets at a price just like supermarket in the suburbs. When it comes to the shopping in Tokyo, Ginza is a place to go. Ginza is an area with high end brand shops, both international and Japanese brands. Something has been the face of Ginza for a long time a pearl brand Mikimoto and skincare brand Shiseido. Ginza is not just about the luxury shops. You can also enjoy shopping at Uniqlo at two locations in Ginza. This is Uniqlo too. In this center of the commerce of Japan, there are shops and showrooms of Japanese brands, such as Sony, Seiko, Yamaha, Nissan. You can learn about the history of the brands and also get to know more about the machinery itself. If you like to see something more traditional, near Ginza there is a Kabukiza Theater. Kabuki is a Japanese traditional performing art that all male actors play old tales in the beautiful background. Kabuki usually lasts about 4 hours with breaks, but for visitors from abroad, you can also watch just one act that you can make casually put in your schedule during your shopping in Ginza or exploring Tsukiji. The fish market that has been long at Tsukiji has moved to Toyosu, but there are still many fish shops and restaurants that offer fresh seafoods. You can find numerous shops that offer sushi, seafood bowls, and different street foods. If you like to feel more old Tokyo-style market, Tsukiji might be better than Toyosu to, to enjoy the seafoods. It is a touristy spot, but it's a fun place to take a look at. Visit 100 yen shop. If you are looking for something reasonably priced, try Daiso, a 100 yen shop. Not everything is 100 yen, so please make sure to check the price tag. There is also a spin-off chain called Standard. The price range is from a few dollars to 10 bucks or so, but everything is in a similar earthy color that match with your interiors, and most of the products are well thought and well done that I'm afraid my rooms are occupied by their products. The store in Shibuya is very large, so you might want to be careful not to spend too much time there. Something big in Tokyo is Tokyo Disney Resort. In less than 20 minutes from Tokyo Station, there are two theme parks, Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea, and you see some original attractions that you only see in Japan. In 2024, Disney Sea is expanding with Disney Fantasy Springs and even more choices of attractions and hotels you can enjoy. Well, it's still number 36 and main part of Tokyo hasn't started yet, but if you are a little bit tired of the crowd of Tokyo, it should be nice to spend half a day in the morning at Mount Takao. You can enjoy light hiking trails and see temples on the mountain. Now let's get back to Shibuya, central Tokyo. Shibuya Paroko is a shopping center above the hill of Shibuya. You can find popular Japanese character shops, Nintendo Tokyo. On the same floor, you see Pokemon Center Shibuya and some other character shops. In the basement, there are many restaurants so you can have a great lunch there. When you are at Shibuya Parko, you can also not miss the rooftop terrace too. If you like to see Shibuya from somewhere much higher, a must-visit place is Shibuya Sky. Shibuya Sky is an observatory on the top of Shibuya Scramble Square building. This is not the highest observatory in Tokyo, but it's very popular as you can feel the sky of Tokyo not through the glasses. The tickets for Sunset Awards sells out 4 weeks before on the date they start to sell the tickets, so you may want to write down the calendar and make sure to get it if you plan to visit around sunset time. In the daytime, you can see Mount Fuji on sunny days, and at night, you can see the neons of Shibuya, right under the building. 
Tokyo has many different faces. East Japan's capital and center of economy, part of Japan's pop culture, and it's where entertainment and art have flourished since old times. As you arrive in Tokyo, the place to drag you into the realization of arrival in Tokyo is Shibuya's Scramble Crossing. This is a top choice spot, but also an important intersection for office workers, commuters, and shoppers to Shibuya, making it one of the busiest crossings in the world. In front of the Shibuya station, you will also see the Royal Dog of Hachiko, the symbol of Shibuya. Hachiko is a statue of the dog born in 1923 that used to come to Shibuya Station every evening looking for his owner, Mr. Ueno, without knowing that he suddenly passed away. In Shibuya, a good place to take a rest is Miyashita Park. In exchange for Shibuya City renting out the space under the park in front of the station to a private company as a shopping center, the company maintains and manages the park. It's crowded and hard to find a bench on the weekend, but it's nice to be able to relax right in front of Shibuya Station, hearing the sound of the train tracks right next to it. Tokyo's two popular spots, Shibuya and Harajuku, are actually in walking distance. One of the streets that connect them are Cat Street. Cat Street connects Shibuya and Harajuku and is a fun walking street lined with the, the latest trend shops and outdoor shops. There are also many small back streets around Harajuku, so it's a fun place to explore. When you go to Harajuku, something you might want to check out is the rooftop of Omokado and Harakado, a two shopping center that are facing each other across the Jingumai traffic right. You can relax on the rooftop and enjoy the coffee looking at the city of the Tokyo. The top spot in Harajuku is Takeshita Street. It's been a street young crowd gathered from all over Japan. You see some cute pop culture shops, and recently they have many souvenir shops and a themed cafe. Iconic street food from Harajuku is a crepe and big cotton candy. If you are tired of hustle and bustle of Harajuku and Shibuya, there is a major shrine right behind the Harajuku station. Something makes the shrine special is a large forest around it. You can feel the air is much cooler there in the forest. This forest was made a hundred years ago, and about 100,000 trees were donated from across Japan, and 110,000 men worked to make this forest. On the north side of the shrine, there is a grass area where the locals are sitting and chatting on the grass. If you like to enjoy the garden more, a must be place is Shinjuku Gyoen National Garden that you can enter with 500 yen admission. There are several different areas that you can enjoy walking, enjoy scenery, and flowers. Shinjuku Gyoen is especially famous during the cherry blossom season. There is a Starbucks inside and several vendors selling snacks and plenty of vending machines in the garden. But I recommend you to bring something to eat and leisure seat for more fun time. If you took a rest well, now it's time to jump out to the city of Tokyo again. Shinjuku is the largest and the busiest downtown area of Tokyo. For some, Shinjuku at night might be the most Tokyo-like scenery. And your trip to Shinjuku starts from Shinjuku Station. Shinjuku Station is a hub of JR lines. In addition, three subways and three private railways KO, Odakyu, and Seibu are merging. It has a record of the busiest stations in the world. Some parts of Shinjuku Station is now under construction to rebuild to the building higher than Tokyo Metropolitan Government and other projects start soon. Probably the construction lasts another decade or two. So it's really like the maze, and you might see a different view every time you visit Tokyo. Kabukicho is an entertainment district stretches north of Shinjuku Station. You'll see a big Godzilla statue is looking down on the street. Kabukicho is a place to visit at night and enjoy the neon lights. Recently opened Kabukicho Tokyo Tower has a food court and some amusement facility. I don't say it's a 
dangerous place, but please be careful not to follow someone and talk to you in Kabukicho, saying that they have a good restaurant or bars. In Shinjuku, there are some bars streets like Omoide Yokocho and Golden Guy. They originally started as an unofficial market after the World War II, and there are many tiny bars lined up in narrow alleys. Right next to the train tracks of Shinjuku Station is Omoide Yokocho. You see many Japanese style bars, customers are drinking, pushing shoulders each other. When Japanese people drink and eat after work or to gather with friends, a place we like to go is Izakaya. When you sit on the seat, they usually give you a small plate called Otoshi, and it's like the seating charge, something we cannot change about it because it's a custom. But if it's intimidating to go to the old style izakaya, recently there are some bars that doesn't charge the otoshi, and also you can order in English. And one chain is a yakitori chain called Chikuzenya. The shop I went was in Nakano, and this place is very traveler friendly. You can order from your QR code in English, and you can check what you ordered and what is the total price right now. In the north of Kabukicho, there is a town called Shin Okubo that there are many foreign grocery shops. Among them, the east side of the town is known as Korean restaurants and shops. You can enjoy Korean foods and shopping there. There's also a big discount store, Don Quixote, which has been here for a long time. Shinjuku is also a neighborhood the Tokyo government is located. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building is in Nishi Shinjuku. It's a high rise twin tower with free observation deck on the upper floor. The building is designed by Kenzo Tange, same for the Park Tower that has a Park Hyatt Tokyo on the top floors, which became famous for the movie with Scarlett Johansson lost in translation. However, when you think of the center of Tokyo, you might think of more about Tokyo Station that has the name of Tokyo. The Manochi side of the Tokyo Station has the largest square in front of the station, and the roads are directly connected to the Imperial Palace. Imperial Palace is where the Japanese Emperor lives. The Imperial family is continuing more than 1,500 years or 2,000 years depending on the study. Imperial family don't interfere with the politics. But the family has been respected as a symbol of Japan. Visitors cannot enter the palace, but you can walk around the Nijubashi Bridge, and you can also enter East Garden, where you can see the trace of Edo Castle. Tokyo Station is not just a railway station, it has large underground shopping malls. One part is called Tokyo Character Street, and you can get lots of different character goods. They also have Tokyo Ramen Street, that you can see some ramen shops. If you are a train fan, Sing train are also a big attraction of Tokyo. Every major city in the world has subways called in different names such as subway, tube, underground or metro. And something unique about Tokyo is there are two subway companies, Tokyo Metro and Toei by Tokyo government running underground of Tokyo. But there are also elevated trains by JR. And that is also an important transportation in the city center. So some foreign tourists call it metro too. The symbol of Tokyo is Yamanote line that goes around Tokyo in the loop in about 60 minutes. Even if you don't have an opportunity to take Shinkansen, you can enter the platform of Shinkansen to see trains. With one ticket, you can go both JL Central's platform and JL East platform. So if you or your children like to see Shinkansen, it's a good idea to get an entry ticket to the Shinkansen platform. Just it's a busy platform, so please be careful not to go too close to the rail or home doors. One good spot to take photo of trains in Tokyo city center together is Hijiribashi Bridge near Ochanomizu Station. It's right outside the JR Ochanomizu Station, and you see JR train comes and goes to two different directions of Tokyo Station and Akihabara Station. You also see Tokyo Metro's Maunochi line comes out above ground just to across the Kanda River. My favorite spot to look at the train is McDonald's in front of Seibu Shinjuku Station. You see the JR trains going by continuously with the background of skyscraper in Nishi Shinjuku. If you have seen old Japanese anime in the 80s, 
You might have seen this scene of Shinjuku buildings from this angle. Visiting locations used for movies and anime is also a fun thing to do. This is a stair that became famous in the anime called Your Name. If you like anime goods, Akihabara is a must visit place in Tokyo. But before Akihabara became as popular with pop culture like now, Akihabara used to be a town known for the electronics shops. I still remember that I had to come to Akihabara to get a soldering iron for school work when I was in junior high school. Even though many shops are replaced by subculture stores, you can get a glimpse of traditional atmosphere of Akihabara at the electronics town under the train tracks of Akihabara Station and Tokyo Radio Department Store. If you like anime and figures, Akiba Kaikan is one of the places to go. It's a building with lots of hobby shops that you can explore hours if you like. Let's go to the large electronic stores in Tokyo. Big stores in Tokyo are Big Camera and Yodobashi Camera. Akihabara is a home for Yodobashi Akiba, one of the large electronic shops in Tokyo. If you are tired of walking around but you like to take a rest, a good place to go is an internet cafe. Kaikats Club is one of the major internet cafe. To make a membership card, you need an actual passport. But once you make a membership card, you can check in easily with machine and make reservation online too. I took one traveler from the United States to make a membership card and on the process of the being a member, both shop person and online assistant were very helpful. Depending on the location, but Kaikats Club has all private rooms and you can choose either floor or chair. This floor room is popular as you can sleep. It's quiet and good break away from the city noise. All comics are Japanese, but you can get free refill of drinks and also take showers and do laundry if you like. Towels are sold at the counter for a few hundred yen, or some locations have it for free. For this Shinjuku one, being the membership is 370 yen, and to stay, 3 hours 1680 yen and 24 hours 7020 yen. Just like vending machine, something you see in Tokyo everywhere is Gachapon. In Akihabara, there is a place like Gachapon Kaikan, but again, it's everywhere in the town of Tokyo. My favorite one is Yamanote Line's Gachapon that I see in Akihabara Station. I get this little pouch of Yamanote Line design for 300 yen. I think it's good. But if you want to see more Akasha, let's head to Ikebukuro which is another subculture center in Tokyo. It has the world's largest Gachapon center with 3,000 machines lined up. The Gachapon center is in a big building complex called Sunshine City. It also has a Sunshine City aquarium and shopping center with Pokemon Center, so it's a place you can enjoy even on rainy days. It's not a major one, but Sunshine City also has an observation deck on the 60th floor. This Ikebukuro is known for two big department stores, Tobu and Seibu. It's hiding behind Shinjuku and Shibuya's popularity, but it's also one of the leading shopping towns in Tokyo. Recently, there are many anime shops open and becoming like the second Akihabara town. From Ikebukuro Station, if you take Seibu Ikebukuro Line, you can get to the Toshimaen Station. There, there is a Warner Brothers Studio Tour Tokyo the making of Harry Potter. This is a new facility just opened in Tokyo in 2023 after the park called Toshimae closed. It's the second attraction after the one in London, and it's a must visit place if you are big Harry Potter fans. Tokiwaso. If you want something a little more Japanese, you'll find a very quiet town that became the birthplace of many anime artists, such as Tezuka Osamu. Around Higashi Nagasaki Station of Seibu Line, there are former sites where anime artists lived, called Tokiwaso. You can spot several anime-related sites in the quiet town.
Kishibojin is located near Ikebukuro Station. You'll encounter old-fashioned sight, like you are time slip to old days. In this town, you see the only remaining street car in Tokyo, Toden Arakawa Line. It runs from Waseda near Shinjuku to Inoabashi Station, which is the northeast of Tokyo. It's very slow and takes time to ride everything, so you might want to just ride part of the route if you don't have time. Now let's head to the north. Visiting Grandma's Harajuku, what do you pass by with this tram is Koshinzuka Station. The street is connected from Sugamo Station of JR Yamanote Line, and it's called Grandma's Harajuku, as there are so many shops which is popular among senior travelers. Visit Askayama. Let's get on the train tram again and go to Askayama Park that lays in front of JR Oji Station. Askayama is a well-known place for cherry blossom tree. If you try to go to the park from Oji Station, there are lots of stairs, but you can also take this free tram that takes you up to the park. By the river under the Askayama Park, there's Oji Shrine. This is one of the Tokyo's 10 shrines. All of these shrines are not a popular tourist spot, but they all have a good atmosphere, so it might be interesting to see how many you can go. One of them, Akasaka Hikawa Shrine, is right near the Roppongi, and Atago Shrine is near Tranomon Hills. That it is believed that if you succeed in your business, if you run up the stairs. Atago Shrine is a beautiful place, but in case you cannot go up the stairs, there is an elevator, so no worry. Visit Arcade Shopping Mall of Tokyo. Minoabashi, which is the end station of Toden Tram, is a town where the old-fashioned shopping street still remains. The tram ends at Minoabashi Station, and right next to the station, you can see a little shopping street with local residents. As you get off the Nippori Station of Yamanote Line, you will find yourself in the quiet neighborhood of Yanaka. It's an area with many temples and commercial streets called Yanaka Ginza that you can feel the old Tokyo's atmosphere. You can look around some shops and also try some street foods. This area also has lots of small alleys and known for cats. I couldn't spot cat this day, but if you are lucky, you can find some. As you walk towards the west of Yanaka, there is Nezu Shrine between Nezu Station and Sendagi Station. The shrine has red tree gates continuing to Otome Inari Shrine. In April, you can see azalea flowers bloom. Visit Ueno Park. Ueno Park is a large park laying right next to Ueno Station. If you leave the gate of the station, you're already stepping in the park. Almost all lands of the Ueno Park used to be belonging to the Kanage Temple, which is now quietly located in the back of the park. But you still see many historical temples and shrines in the Ueno Park. Toshogu Shrine, Kojoten Shrine, Bentendo in Shinobas Pond, and Kiyomizu Kanondo is a must-visit place in Ueno Park. Ueno Park is also a home for about 10 museums. What you might not want to miss is Tokyo National Museum. You can see Japanese Buddhism statues, swords, kimonos, and everything Japan in national treasure level. Riding Boat If you need some activities, Let's take a boat ride in Ueno Park. If you cannot handle the regular boat, you can also use pedal boat. You can enjoy the different view of the park from a boat. There are some other places in Tokyo that you can take a boat, like Chidori Gafuchi, Iidabashi. Walking Ameyoko Street. After spending some time in nature of Ueno, let's head out to the Ameyoko Street. 
、uh, Miyoko is a shopping street that connects to Okachimachi Station, and seven other streets run parallel to it. It's like 365 days festival with all the shops and visitors, especially in the evening time. There is a small temple, Marishiten Tokudaiji, in the middle of the busy town that I always drop by to pray when you come to Amiyoko. Watch Sumo at Kokugikan. The next thing to do in Tokyo is watching Sumo at the Kokugikan Arena. Tickets are difficult to obtain, so I recommend you to purchase them online on the day of the sales begin. For more details, please see my Sumo video. If you go to Kokugikan, Please make sure to eat their specialties, yakitori and chanko nabe. Chanko is a small wrestler's favorite foods. Even if you couldn't get the tickets of the sumo match or it's not the season for sumo, you can eat chanko nabe around the Ryogoku station. Right next to the station, there is a building called Ryogoku Edo Nore that are using all the Ryogoku station's building. In their restaurant, Chanko Kirishima offers amazing chanko nabe. It's a reasonable price for lunch, and the interior are lots of sumo. So it's an interesting place to visit. Watch baseball game at Tokyo Dome. If you like to see other sports, you can go to watch baseball game. Tokyo has two teams, Giants, plays in Tokyo Dome, and Swallows, plays in Jingu Stadium. Tokyo Dome also has a baseball museum, which are almost all in Japanese, But if you are a baseball fan, it might be a good place to check out. And something you might want to do in Tokyo is seeing a small Japanese garden. Right next to the Tokyo Dome, there's Koishikawa Kora Kuen. It's a Japanese garden made in 1629 as a garden of a house for Mito Tokugawa family. In another big space of the garden, there are lots of small words are expressed. Another Japanese garden is Kiyosumi Garden in Kiyosumi Shirakawa. This one was organized by the founder of Mitsubishi Group and donated to Tokyo in 1924. Something you might want to pay attention here is stones collected from all over Japan by the founder of Mitsubishi. Feel the life of all Tokyo. The good place you can feel the air of all Tokyo is Kaga Edo Museum in Kiyosumi Shirakawa. There, you can get a glimpse of life in Edo. You can imagine you live there with limited lighting and, and feeling cold winter and hot summer directly in the house. Tokyo has tons of museums, and, but probably most tourists are visiting the major museums like the Tokyo National Museum. But there are lots of other museums in Tokyo, and those are usually in off the major terminal or off the tourist spots. Something good to get is the Tokyo Good Pass. It's including lots of small museums. So, what is great about this Good Pass is it takes you to off the touristy spots or hidden gem neighborhoods that you probably don't think of visiting without this pass. Kiyosumi Shirakawa, where Kiyosumi Garden and this Egedo Fukagawa Museum, is an interesting town that where you see modern museum of art of Tokyo and modern coffee shops mixed in the old downtown. The first store of the Blue Bottle of Coffee outside the United States also opened in this Kiyosumi Shirakawa. If you are visiting on a warm day, you can also have a beer looking at the bridges and Tokyo Sky Tree by the river. Right next to Kiyosumi Shirakawa is a town called Monzen Nakacho, often called Monnaka by locals. It's a town with full of temples and shrines and has a lively downtown atmosphere. There are a major temple of Fukagawa Narita san and Tomioka Hachimangu Shrine. It also has a bar alley along the canal, and by the Sumida River, there is a park that you can overlook the city. Across the bridge is an area called Tsukishima. Eat Monjayaki at Tsukishima. This town is known for Tokyo's soul food, Monjayaki. Near Tsukishima Station, there is a street. That you can see lots of monja shops. Monja is an interesting kind of messy food, tastes delicious, so it's a must be street if you come nearby. If you like to experience more old Tokyo's atmosphere, a good place to visit is Shibamata, 
on the eastern edge of Tokyo. There is a Shibamata Taishakuten temple and traditional street with many souvenir shops and restaurants. I also recommend to go to the behind the temple and going out to the river bank and watch the sunset. It's something nostalgic. If you want to enjoy the same quiet atmosphere, another place I recommend is Jindaiji Temple. Jindaiji is known for soba, and you can enjoy handmade, very authentic soba noodle. There are lots of soba shops around the Jindaiji Temple, and I chose this shop that I could eat outside. You can visit here by bus either from Chofu Station of Keio Line or Kichijoji Station of JR. But you don't have to visit here just for the temple and soba. Right next to the temple, there is a big Jindaiji Botanical Garden. You can enjoy the large garden with beautiful flowers and nature. Near Kichijoji Station, there is Inokashira Park. Inokashira Park is a good spot to take a boat and enjoy walking in the nature. It has a different view of four seasons. Inside the park, there's the Inokashira Park Zoo and Ghibli Museum. Inokashira Park Zoo has two faces small zoo that you can see cute animals, and sculpture museum of Mr. Seibo Kitamura, who is known for the statue of Nagasaki's Peace Memorial Park. Inside the several small buildings and in the forest, you see lots of statues. Ghibli Museum is a museum made by the Japanese anime studio, Studio Ghibli, which is known for anime like Laputa, Kiki's Delivery, and Totoro. But this Ghibli Museum, you might want to make a reservation before you come to Japan, so you can make sure that you can get the tickets. Visit Nakano and Nakano Broadway. Nakano is only one station from Shinjuku by Orange Chuo Line. After you go through the arcade street from the station, you will hit the Nakano Broadway. It's an old shopping mall that has many hobby and subculture shops. Nakano is also a good place to find a place to drink. Around the Broadway, you see many interesting bars and shops. If you like to visit something out of the big city like Shinjuku, you can just take your train one station and you have a different experience in Nagano. Another interesting town next to Nagano is Koenji. Koenji is a lively city with arcade shopping center and many second-hand clothing shops. Koenji has the Koenji Temple that the station and others name came from and also a shrine for the weather that you can wish for the weather. The best food to try in Koen is a curry shop, Eric South under the rail. It tastes amazing and it's not as busy as Tokyo Station store. Visit Theme Cafe. Tokyo is a home for many themed cafes with certain concepts, such as Pokemon cafes, maid cafes, there is a sweets shop near Setagaya Daita Station that are run by the brother of Ghibli director Hayao Miyazaki. And you can enjoy cute Totoro-like shoe creams in the quiet retro environment of residential area. Gotokuchi is a temple famous for Manekineko, which is like an inviting cat that welcoming fortune to your house if you have one in your house. You can purchase yours and bring as your souvenir or leave one here. I left mine here, but maybe I could bring back. It's also a nice place just to see the buildings and gardens too. When it comes to the temple, let's go back to the city center. The last stop for the temple is Zojo's temple. The scene with contrast of Tokyo Tower behind and the old temple of Zojoji is one of the top spots of Tokyo. It is said that the flow of the good energy from Mount Fuji is coming here. Behind this Zojoji temple is Tokyo Tower. Tokyo Tower is no longer the best spot for the observation probably because there are lots of tall buildings around. It remains as number one icon of Tokyo. It's also a great structure to look up from the street. 
Near the Tokyo Tower, the new facility is the Team Labo Borderless. This is a place you can enjoy the digital art that never stay in the same position. So it will be a new experience if you haven't seen the digital art by Team Lab. Before you leave to your country or travel to other parts of Japan, the great place to go is the observatory of Haneda Airport. Each terminal, one, two, and three, has different observation deck. They are all in the shopping area before the security, so anyone can visit, even if you don't take the airplane that day. And the last and the best thing to do in Tokyo is to walk around the city center of Tokyo that street continue endlessly. So that was my list of 100 things to do in Tokyo. Tokyo has a lot more than this 100 things. It might be one of the fun to find your favorite shops, find your secret photogenic spots. I hope you can find your own way of enjoying Tokyo. Thank you for watching until here. Have a great trip to Tokyo. Have a great week until the next video.